The leadership rolled out another argument to back the Prime Minister's approach to Brexit today. The Chancellor told Conference the proposals agreed at Chequers would give a boost to the public finances and public spending. I'm going to stick my neck out here today and make a prediction to you that when the Prime Minister gets a deal agreed, there will be a boost to our economic growth, a deal dividend. There was also an acknowledgement that Jeremy Corbyn, much mocked at these conferences, might be getting some traction with the public for his policies. While Labour's answers will solve nothing, their questions deserve a response. And we must answer their challenges with our own conservative solutions, based on realism, not populism. There were policy announcements, a possible new tax on tech companies, new help for businesses to hire apprentices. But it's Brexit, not the domestic agenda, that dominates the fringe here. We believers in Britain and we Brexiteers feel that. Dejected, disheartened, disappointed and very sadly unable to fully trust our own, our own Conservative government to deliver Brexit. And why? Because our Prime Minister is listening to the bad advisers such as on Robbins. The villains for this section of the party include senior officials and some pro-Brexit ministers still in the government. We also have cabinet ministers who claim to be pro-Brexit but have sat back, you know, with nothing but inaction to their name. Their legacies, in my view, including their failure to stand up for Brexit and their judgments will be remembered for generations to come. To get any deal like Chequers through the Commons, Theresa May needs to pry some pro-Brexit MPs away from this support base. She's going to try and grind down those numbers. She will possible. try and grind down those numbers. Sneak it through with maybe a few Labour people. But, but, but you can see the feeling at the conference from the grassroots of the party. Overwhelmingly, the people of this party recognise that Chequers will be a disaster for the UK. And they will not forgive their MPs what for voting for a disaster. The numbers may not be scientific, but the informal polling, 200 voted in this ballot, is a sign of an insurgent mood in parts of the party. And the results were as, as follows. Jacob Rees-Mogg topped the poll with 49%. Uh, Boris Johnson came second with 26%. Uh, David Davis got 9% and uh, Theresa May got 1%. The cues to hear Jacob Rees-Mogg speak at fringe meetings suggest he is the hot ticket here for some activists. Certainly better than the turnout in the main hall, this one for the new culture secretary, Jeremy Wright. The EU was set up to protect freedom. It was the Soviet Union that stopped people leaving. After his speech yesterday comparing the EU to the Soviet Gulag, the Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, was slapped down by, amongst others, the Estonian ambassador to London, who tweeted, The Soviet regime was brutal. I lived under it. Comparison is insulting. European Commissioner Viteris Andrukatis from Lithuania tweeted, I was born in the Soviet Gulag and imprisoned by the KGB a few times. Happy to brief you on the main differences between the EU and the Soviet Union. Any time, whatever helps. The Prime Minister might be fending off any direct challenge here this week, but activists who want checkers chucked are fueling and firing up her critics in Parliament for a mighty battle in the weeks to come. Well, Jeremy Hunt's words have caused quite an angry reaction in countries which are now part of the EU but used to be part of the Soviet Union. Earlier today, I caught up with Radek Sikorski. He's the former Polish foreign minister, and I asked him what he thought about comparing the EU with the Soviet Union. Well, we find it um, immature and offensive because, of course, we lived under Soviet domination and we truly could not escape. When Hungary tried, it got invaded. When Czechoslovakia tried, it also got invaded. And we hadn't joined voluntarily, whereas you did and you can. The very fact that you've had a, a referendum on leaving means that uh, you've been a free country all along. The, the, the point, though, surely is that there, there are people in Brussels who want to punish Britain for wanting to leave. No, not at all. Uh, you're resigning from uh, a club. You found the uh, the bylaws um, irksome and the fees too high. Uh, but there is a bar tab to be paid, and of course, uh, you've agreed the amount. Can you see a deal being done? It's difficult because the club has uh, two or three 
um, overseas memberships, membership uh, 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 schemes, but you don't like any of them. Do you anticipate that Mrs. May will make further concessions? Well, that's uh, entirely up to you. We would just like Britain to make up its mind because uh, the, the deadline is approaching and, of course, everybody will be worse off, uh, Britain even more so, if um, there is no orderly transition. So I've been speaking with Matt Hancock. Now, he's the new Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. I began by asking him for his reaction to Jeremy Hunt's comments. Well, he was making the argument that if you make it impossible for a country to leave, then that doesn't reduce populist pressures. Uh, it increases them. And he was making the argument for why it's good not only for the UK, but also for the EU to have a good deal. And but I think, that's I mean, a, the, I think the, it's a very important The argument. EU doesn't have any ballistic missiles. Of course it doesn't have those He's deals. a foreign secretary. But the argument that he was making is that a good deal so that the UK can leave on good terms is the best for both sides. And I think that, I believe that very strongly. Well, of course, you talk about both sides, but there are dozens of sides. I mean, you wander around here, you'll get a dozen different views. I mean, half the party's in favour, half the past is against. Uh, I mean, where are we? Well, I think that actually what we're seeing is a coalescing behind the PM this week. Now, of course, there's voices off on both sides of the debate uh, calling for no deal, calling for a second referendum. I think both of those would be bad outcomes. Uh, and I think that actually the sense here is let's get behind the PM and let's give her the, the ability and the mandate to get land that deal with the EU. Now, Boris Johnson has put out a photograph of himself running through the wheat fields in a pair of uh, swimming trucks. Um, right. Is this a guy who could lead the Conservative Party? No, I'm not that interested in Boris Johnson. Well, would you ever work for him? No. I, 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 I have that on the record. I can't see that matter. I can't see that arising. You can't see it arising. Would you ever vote for Boris Johnson? Would I? If, if I in what? If I, if I lived him? in this constituency, who was the Conservative? No, no, no. Come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. There's something's going to happen here. He's challenging the, the Prime Minister. Uh, yeah, if, and if he doesn't do it here, he'll do it in the, in the ditch somewhere else. Right, he's challenging the Prime Minister, and the response of this conference is to say, let's get behind the PM and back her, and back her to get a good deal. That's actually what's happening this week. Not least because people who really care about the future of this country and are members of the Conservative Party are here having seen in Liverpool last week what the alternative looks like, and it looks pretty frightening with a very hard left agenda that's failed every time it's been tried. Do you know how frightening this looks? And A divided party who vast numbers of members are singing one hymn sheet, vast numbers of members are singing another. There's no unity here. And the vast majority are backing the PM, not on one fringe, not on the other fringe, but right down the middle, supporting the deal that is on the table. The reason we've come forward with this proposal is that it is the best way to make sure that we fulfil the referendum result, we take back control of our laws and our money, Yet we keep a strong relationship with the EU, which I care about and millions of people uh, want to see happen. If there is a bad winter and there's also a, a bad Brexit, can the NHS cope? Yes. We're putting in place what's necessary in case there's no deal. I don't want to see that no deal. Does that mean stockpiles? Yes, it does, yes. And that's it's pharmaceutical companies have got contracts with the NHS and the stockpiling is in order to ensure they can fulfil those contracts so people watching this programme can get the drugs that they need. And we've got to plan for all eventualities. There's lots of things in life that you plan for even though you don't want them to happen. This is one of them. And here you are as a Minister of the Crown with no idea what will be going on three months from now. No, I've got a very clear idea. We will negotiate with the EU uh, to get a good deal like the one that we've set out uh, as agreed at Chequers. With the possibility that no deal will be the answer? Well, I think that that deal is the right answer, and then we'll bring Would it back. Would you tolerate a no deal? I don't want to see a no deal, no. I want to successfully conclude these negotiations. I suggest you wouldn't vote for it. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't like the idea of no deal but I do want to deliver on the result of the referendum, and there's an answer to that, and it's the one that the PM proposed at Chequers. Matt Hancock, thank you very much for talking to us. <clears throat> well, our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is with me now. Gary, I went into the Chancellor's speech expecting to uh, hear a few boos and maybe even a few hisses. Not a bit. Standing ovation and not much mention of Brexit. 
Yes, low key standing ovation, but it's almost as if when the uh, activists come here, they follow two different arrows into different rooms. In the conference hall, you find some loyalists, you find dissidents who aren't clapping but aren't exactly jeering or gnashing their teeth either. Go in the other direction, say to one of the fringe meetings that Jacob rees mogg has been uh, speaking at, and you can barely get in the room. Uh, the atmosphere is uh, crackling, and there is real menace and anger about the direction of policy the government is taking. Philip Hammond decided not to touch on uh, Brexit too much, apart from offering the Brexit dividend as one of the uh, ways he hopes to win over uh, MPs if there is a deal. On the whole, he was trying to emphasise uh, how the party could take on uh, Jeremy Corbyn. He was talking about modernisation uh, of, of a lot of policies to cope with the digitisation uh, age. And he was trying to say the Conservatives can represent change. But in some ways, Philip Hammond is maybe the wrong medium uh, for that message because he doesn't exactly exude change himself. But what about the spectre that haunts the entire process here, Brexit itself? Well, it is. I think being here is a bit like being on the Carolina coast a while ago. You know, you can feel the gusts, people are boarding up their windows, the birds are doing funny things, but it hasn't made land yet, the great force which we know is out there. There is a great suspicion amongst ministers, amongst activists, that at the October summit, maybe even at the November summit, but certainly the October summit, they think they will see Theresa May make a really big compromise with the EU that goes even beyond uh, what they find, some of them unacceptable in the Chequers deal, maybe on the customs union, areas like that. And they want her at that point to pivot, as the terminology uh, has it amongst these uh, people, and move to another policy, free trade agreement, move away from Chequers altogether. There is this uh, atmosphere that something is looming but it isn't necessarily absolutely happening here. What's happening here is that people are rehearsing their lines and maybe even people like Jacob Rees-Mogg are firming up their opinions. Well, Gary, thank you. And we'll be exploring a bit of pivoting later in the programme. But uh, earlier, we filmed three women who dressed as suffragettes. They brought their protest against fracking in Lancashire to the conference. They're opposed to the government's plans to fast-track planning permission for fracking. The protest is aimed at a fringe event where the Minister for Energy, Claire Perry MP, is speaking alongside the fracking industry representatives themselves. It follows the imprisonment last week of three anti-fracking protesters. Opportunity, the word is everywhere around here. We're the party of opportunity, they're trying to say. But with the May Premiership so unstable, some clearly think it's opportunity knocks. Now is the time to come together, because this is a moment for the optimists. We are here to give a hand up and not a hand out. Let's find the common purpose and sense of destiny. We can ensure that this country and our world are cleaner, greener and stronger. Jeremy Hunt's chances may have dipped, though, after the former Remainer yesterday compared EU membership to states once controlled by the Soviet Union. The European Parliament's Brexit representative condemned his remarks as offensive and outrageous. Good morning, Mr. Very Hunt. Nice to see you. How are you? Wasn't your speech yesterday a bit over the top? I don't the think The Latvian so. ambassador I, I seems to think, think so. so. No, I don't think so. Lord Ricketts uh, described it as rubbish. It's just an attempt to well, curry he... favour with the Tory members, isn't it? Well, I hope he reads the whole speech and then he'll see that it's uh, a very thoughtful reflection of the situation we're in and it's a plea for friendship with Europe. Dominic Raab spoke in his speech of his background, another clue to high ambition. Is that I, I the take, speech I, of a, a leadership contender? I, no, it's, uh, but I take compliments from wherever they come, even Channel 4. Was it the pitch for the leadership? No, of course it was. Let me see. Dominic. Gavin Williamson, once the coming man, seemed more interested in going. Was that a more leader-like speech from you after your early mishaps? Oh, are you keeping well? Are you enjoying the conference, Michael? Do you regard yourself as a leadership contender? Many here, though, see Jeremy Corbyn's conference last week as an alert that the Tories' problems are deeper than who's leader. Do you think Labour's uh, giving you a kick up the backside this week? Well, I think Labour certainly identified some of the anxieties of the British people. I think they have the wrong solutions. Um, but nevertheless, they are showing people that they're on their side. People are struggling. We Conservatives have got to show working people that we're on their side. Ideas too from a man on the other side of the party to tackle the Tories' problem that people under 45 have now deserted them. 
we've got to sort out housing because that is a natural ambition and the young are being cut off from it. Um, you and I were in a position that we could buy our house before we were 35 and that's just not true of the new generation and we need to be building more. But does the party understand the younger generation? Indeed, are even the young people here representative of it? I mean, isn't the trouble here that here you are, all young men here, but you're all dressed in suits and some of you've got ties and you blue suit, dark suits. I mean, how, how do I put this? You're not very representative of the um, population of young men of your age as a whole. Do you we think that is sort of the wrong should, image, really? You should never judge a book by its cover, should you? No, but I mean, the outside world will do. Well, that doesn't make it right, and that doesn't mean that we should respond to what they say. I mean, your party is losing, uh, you know, young, younger voters. Mm. You know, they're sort of overwhelmingly Labour. How do you think the t Conservatives tackle that? I think segregating them as if we've got to hand up baubles to them and Christmas presents is the wrong approach. We have to treat but them... But Labour have, have, have got lots of baubles and Christmas presents. Yes, but again, that doesn't make it right. We can't be labour like. On sale here, Tory posters from successful campaigns gone by. Politics has changed so much these last few years, though, that new ideas and slogans may be needed for them to keep up with the competition. Well, we're joined now by the MPs Jacob Rees-Mogg and Anna Subri. Jacob Rees-Mogg, your only chance of Brexit is Mrs May's Brexit. And if you vote against that, you vote against Brexit. I don't think that's a correct analysis. I think that there are a number of ways of getting to Brexit. One is that the government should come to the conclusion that a Super Canada deal could actually work, and that depends on discussions in relation to the Irish border. And the other is leaving on world trade terms, and the Prime Minister has made it clear that no deal is better than a bad deal, and the government's making preparations for that. So there are two other options. Well, but the fact is that's what she is wedded to, and how, when is she going to change her mind? How will she change her mind? The issue there is, at least in part, the response of the European Union, because so far the European Union has given no indication that Chequers meets its red lines, regardless of what people like me uh, may be thinking about the Chequers proposal. Well, the truth is you're just as implacable on the other side of the whole thing. I not, mean, not at the all. The fact is you will not vote for uh, Mrs May's Brexit. Well, we don't know what her Brexit is. And well, this it, is, the, it, it, this is the whole problem. To, over two years since the people voted to leave it's the Czechos. European Union. It's Czechos. No, that is her opening position. That is not the final destination. And the, and the reality is, this is where Jacob and I actually agree. The European Union have made it very clear that they won't take Chequers, but it's an opening gambit. That's why I welcomed it. Now we find ourselves in a situation where the right-wing rump of my party has decided that they will vote against Chequers in any event. And you know, Jacob talks about Canada. This is the stuff for the fairies. But the truth World is Trade that... Organization for the fairies, because none of it actually delivers on sorting out the border issue. And there is this. At the moment, we trade with the European Union like that. A Canadian-style deal does that. It puts in tariffs. It puts in things that are against business, and it's never happened before in the history of the world. And Jacob is letting well, down is it, British business Is it business that or is it that? Series. And I mean, if you're happy with that, the, how good is it? It will inevitably be different, but the European Union has already offered tariff and quota free trade. The issue on Super Canada is the Irish question. And the ERG, the European Research Group, which I chair, put forward a paper looking at it from the European Union's point of view and saying, what does the European Union need to safeguard the single market? What does it do on its other borders with third countries? And if it's good enough for other borders, would it work uh, in Ireland? And I think that is the beginnings and of a solution to the Irish question. everybody has said it won't, including the Northern Ireland Select mm. Committee, which is full of Brexiteers, mm. some of whom are hard Brexiteers like Jacob. Mm. They went around the world. There is nowhere in no. the world where there are... Do forgive me, let me finish, please. There is nowhere in the world where there are two countries with a border where they enjoy proper, frictionless trade, even between where America in the world, and Canada. Dare, dare I say that the Northern Ireland Select Committee's report came before the ERG's paper, yes, so it couldn't, changed, give, it couldn't give a, an opinion on that. Um, no, Jacob, we're not with saying... respect, 
With respect, Jacob, it absolutely went into this, and there is nowhere no. in the world where the technology exists. Dare I say, you didn't want me to interrupt no, you, right. so there you're might right. be a quid pro quo. No, you're right. Um, I think the issue is using you're the both EU's... Tours. We are, and we agree on many things, but we don't agree on Not this. so sure about right. that at times, Jacob. We, we agree on the broad thrust of the Conservative Party manifesto. I hope so. Um, but the issue on the Northern Ireland border is can you do things that the EU does on other borders which maintain control, maintain the integrity of the single market, but aren't done physically but at the border? It's about a hard border. Have you been to Norway border. and Sweden? I if there are two countries that are going to have a frictionless trade, it's Norway and Sweden. They don't have it. And in the real world, I don't think you've been over to Ireland, yes, have you? Yes, I have. Have you been over to Belfast? I've been to visit the border as right. it happens. So you will know that they are really concerned about this is serious stuff. As the Prime Minister told you, people are really worried about civil insurrection if we don't maintain no border and there is no solution to it. We well, don't have the it, technology. It's wrong to say no border. There is already a border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland for excise duty, for VAT, for currency and for um, uh, immigration purposes. It's a question of do you have a physical border along no, the line? Well, it's and the free movement of goods, of cattle to... and people. And you can't do that unless mm. you're in the single market mm. and the customs union. There is no alternative. Well, that means, but you that means not leaving the European Union. You Together, right the true about. state of what's going on here. Because if we were in the hall, we'd have people supporting Mrs May's Brexit. Out in the fringes, there's either you or there's Anna. And the, the total split. Do, do, would you be prepared to be leader of the, of the Conservative Party and uh, win this argument that way? I'm supporting Theresa May as leader of the Conservative Party. Come hell my, or high water. My ambition is Come for Brexit to be delivered properly. I, I'm supporting the Prime Minister. I've said this till I'm blue in the face. Uh, and that I think she deserves the support of the nation. I just want her policy to go back yeah, to Lancaster House. If it House. doesn't go back to Lancaster House, it shows no sign of doing so. Will you vote against well, it? Yes, will you I vote will. Against? Yes, you I will. will. You will. Yes. Uh, uh, there and, and if it, there if it, we are. I'm uh, supporting Theresa. No, they're not. No, they're prepared to vote you against could them. Up voting against the government. No, I, I've been very clear. There is a solution to deliver leave, but maintain jobs, prosperity, and peace in Northern Ireland. Which the single is market and the customs union. It's not a question of blinking. It's a question about putting your country first. I don't want us to leave the European Union, but I accept that the people have voted leave. What I really want... So you're not a blinker. Are you a blinker? No, I haven't. I, I'm backing I've the Conservative blinked. Party manifesto, which said we would leave well, the customs union. So I've been said, wandering around Jacob, again looking for it. It said, it's a complete... it said we would leave the customs union and the single we market. We lost the general election. Uh, Anna, Jacob, we lost the general election. You stood on 30... that manifesto. No, I didn't, actually. In my did constituency, in your election address? In my constituency, I made it very clear I would continue to argue for the single market market, the customs union and the positive benefits of immigration. We lost 32 seats in England and yes. Wales. Conservative mm. colleagues, there is no mandate for your hard Brexit. Yes, there is. We formed the government and the government has to base its policy on what it offered to the electorate. Otherwise, you let the electorate down and you make voting But the government pointless. hasn't offered a hard Brexit. No, it hasn't. They've it, offered a Chequers Brexit. Chequers, I don't think, meets the Conservative Party manifesto. That's why I will not support it, because it doesn't support the basis on which I was elected. I owe so it to my voters. Are we going to, to sort this out? Let's have a people's vote. Put it back to the people's people. People's vote? Let or a second people referendum. Decide. Didn't like the first results, so make them vote again. People have voted to leave. They had a general election where both I, main I've parties got, backed leave. didn't I've know got, what it meant. I've got and a it's now a Brexit. Oh, so that's stupid. That no, like no, not at all. Not at all. Got a hall, a hall. I want to thank you both for being so good to speak with us tonight.